Hi, I'm Tim Marshall. Welcome to R&B Showcase, a very special edition. We are honoring the life and legacy of Philadelphia radio icon, the legendary Gita with the heater, the big boss with the hot sauce. And of course, uh, helping us to join in on this event to honor Jerry Blavitt is my special guest co-host joining us here in the studio. We got Jam and Jeff Wyman, radio host. Thank you very much, Tim. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here with us again. And of course, we got the Philadelphia radio legend, Mr. Tommy McCarthy. Hey, in the Tim. Studio. Always a pleasure to hang out with you, my man. Great to see you. Great to see you as well. And joining us online is a Philadelphia radio and TV personality. We have with us Jason Lee. How you doing, Jason? Doing great, Tim. Thanks for having me. Jam and Jeff, good to see you. And it is always good to be on any broadcast with Tommy McCarthy. Absolutely. I'm <laughs> glad to have you both. Uh, have glad to have you all, all with us here today uh, to honor Jerry Blavitt. And of course, uh, his book is called You Only Rock Once. And Jerry Blavitt was certainly a one of a kind DJ, not just a radio host and a DJ, but a personality and what he brought to Philadelphia. And uh, everybody all over Philadelphia loved him. And you saw him on some of the, like, the parades and all and all the special events and the dances and the TV shows and the PBS tapings in uh, Pittsburgh. And I mean, the man was just everywhere. And uh, of course, uh, the nightclub owner, entrepreneur, um, the legendary Gita with the heater, Jerry Blavitt. And, and we got you all here. We're going to all talk about and share some history with uh, with Jerry. Of course, uh, he started on the original bandstand uh, back in uh, 1953. It was uh, with uh, Bob Horn. And uh, got his start in radio, WCAU in Camden, various other radio stations. And, of course, uh, everybody knows uh, that he was also on television. He was on The Tonight Show and The Monkees and The Mod Squad and <laughs> various other uh, television shows. He was quite a personality. I know all of you have gotten a chance. We've all met him before, but um, you've all got a chance to know him in different uh, different aspects. And uh, one thing, having Jason Lee here with us, uh, Jason, I got to tell you, man, uh, hearing that voice of yours, I can't only go back to... Jeff, you remember this, Jason, the music mason. <laughs> and the, You know, it's funny, Tim. I, I I watched the show you did with Tommy about, what, a month and a half, two months ago. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked that you said to him, you mentioned me. Mm -hmm. And and I wasn't sure if anybody remembered Jason, the music mason. I haven't used that name since 1994. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry gave me that name. And, you know, with Jerry, everything had to rhyme. Geeter mm -hmm. with the heater, mm -hmm. Jason, the music mason. Mm -hmm. And when we hear that, when I heard the voice, I heard you were on other stations in, in Philadelphia. You were on quite a number of stations uh, in Philadelphia. And every time I heard that I'd voice, I said, I know around. that voice. <laughs> I know that voice. You know, and I kept thinking, that sounded like the same guy that was on uh, PGR. I guess it was full with uh, Gator Gold. Was it Gator Gold Radio? It was Gator Gold Radio. Mm -hmm. I was there from uh, 92 to 94, and it was my first job. Jerry gave me my first job. He launched my career. I will always be grateful to the guy. And it, it was it was such a great place for me because um, it was just the guys that were there, the Geeter and guys like Bob Charger and Andy Volvo, Armin in the morning, mm -hmm. they all taught me the business and they mm -hmm. taught me really well. Jimmy D, the Cannonball, I mean, mm -hmm. the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. You were all part of that. Now, now you worked with Tommy McCarthy. Did you guys work at the station at the same time? Uh, it, was, it was the same radio station, right? Same Unfortunately, I never worked yeah. with Tommy, but I'd love to one day. Mm -hmm. give, right. us some, give us some history on that, that station, though. That, that was a very special um, radio station it was it you was know, tell us about it that. was uh the original call letters were wrcp it was country originally and then they decided in 81 to flip to an oldies format because they were going to hire high lit so in 1982 high ski goes on the radio and the rest of the time they were just playing music but it was high lit doing the midday shift so i got a call uh, I was on the radio in Atlantic City at the time on WMID doing a Sunday night show on the FM, which was WGRF, which stood for uh, Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin wow. owned the radio station at that time in Atlantic City, WMID with WGRF as the FM. So I'm on MID during the day and GRF Sunday nights from six to midnight doing my quote unquote treasure chest of oldie show. So I got a call one night. And it was Tony Mann. Tony Mann used to be a disc jockey on WFIL. And he was now uh, the operations manager at WSNI, which was the FM of WPGR. So he called me. He says, you know, I've been listening to you. I come down to Atlantic City a lot. Um, he used to like to gamble. So he, he would come down on Sunday nights. And he said, on my ride down, when I would start to pick up this station, I would listen to you on my ride. He says, we just decided to hire High Lit. And we need some, you know, good personalities to work around him, people who know the music. 
So that's how I originally got hired there. And then they uh, changed the uh, call letters to WRCP or uh, from WRCP to WPGR in 82. So I worked there from 82 until 90 and there was me and hi. And then in 86, Harvey holiday joined us. Mm -hmm. And in April of 87, Jerry Blavitt, Okay. Uh, 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 was hired. Mm -hmm. So from 87 until 90, High was doing um, uh, from 10 until, uh, let me see if I got this right. No, High was coming on from uh, 9 until noon. I was doing from noon until 2, and Jerry came on from 2 until 4.30 at that time because it was a daytime station. Mm -hmm. So th they kept adjusting our times, but it was High was on first, then me in the middle, in the middle of those mm -hmm. two. Can you imagine mm -hmm. saying, saying good morning to high ski and mm -hmm. saying, and then the Geeters following <laughs> me. So mm -hmm. from a guy who listened to those two mm -hmm. guys as a teenager, mm -hmm. I'm still in school when I'm listening to high on Wibbage and mm -hmm. Jerry on WCAM and then mm -hmm. later WHAT. Mm -hmm. And now I'm the guy in the middle of these two mm -hmm. giants. I mean, mm -hmm. that was quite a time for me in my career. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I was there until 90. And then, of course, Jason, uh, he can pick it up from there. He came in uh, a little bit later. Mm -hmm. now, did, now, did Jerry stay after? Yeah, Jerry left? stayed. And the station was still called Philly Gold Radio when okay. I left. That's mm -hmm. what the PGR stood for, Philly Gold Radio. Mm -hmm. um, then later, after I had left and gone for initially to uh, WIOQ, Solid Gold 102, mm -hmm. and then later I moved on to Oldies 98, WOGL. In the meantime, I guess maybe Jason might know even better. Mm -hmm. When did they originally stop calling it Philly Gold and call it uh, Geeter Gold? That mm -hmm. may be about when you were hired, right? It was a little before I was hired. So um, Pyramid Broadcasting, which owned, uh, as you said, Tommy, WSNI and WPGR, they sold PGR off to a group called All Star Radio. Um, they moved the station out of One Ballot Plaza. We, we had a little little place on Monument Road, uh, just down the road from Channel 10, ironically down the road from Oldies 98. Um, so it, it was it was after it was, shortly, it was around that time is when they changed it to Geeter Gold Radio. I started there as an intern in May of 92, and it was already Geeter, Geeter Gold Radio. The offices were on Monument Road, but the studio was still at One Bala Plaza. So I was going to One Bala every day with, uh, you know, with, with Armin and, uh, and and Bob Charger and all those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, then they eventually moved us to, uh, to Monument Road. But uh, yeah, so it became Geeter Gold Radio, I wanna say sometime in early 1992. Uh, I began as an intern in May, intern for five, six months, and then, uh, the Geeter, God love him, saw something in me and he put me on the air in October of 92. October 3rd, 1992 was my very first show. So this past October was 30 years in broadcasting for me. And to me, I owe it all to Jerry Blavitt. I don't know where my, my career would have been without him. Mm -hmm. But uh, at that point, it was, let's see, it was um, it was Armin in the morning. Bob Charger did midday. Jerry did afternoon. Um, I did evening. I came on at six o'clock after Jerry. Then uh, at one point, Bob Charger left. Andy Volvo, who was doing weekends. Andy Volvo did middays. Um, gosh, who, who did we had? Well, gosh, yeah. the Cannonball did weekends. We had Kevin Fennessy with us for a little mm -hmm. while on weekends. Randy Cotts. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it was it was a it was a good air staff. Mm -hmm. It was a talented yeah. air staff. Sally Star was there too, wasn't she? Wasn't Sally, wasn't yeah. Sally Star there for a while? Oh my gosh, how could I forget yeah. Sally Star? You're right. Yeah, uh, yeah. she did a, a country gold show Sundays mm -hmm. from ten to one with yeah. Andy. I followed her at one o'clock. Wow! So it's That's like cool. here Very I am. Cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm working with Jerry Blab and I'm working with Sally Star. And then it's so then uh, toward the I guess maybe the last year or so of the station. Jerry hired Georgie Woods okay. to be our morning guy. Yeah. So Georgie did six to nine. Then Armin did nine to noon. Mm -hmm. uh, so Georgie did mornings for a while, but then then Georgie was on in the evening and Armin went back to the morning. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I guess 95, maybe May, May or June of 95 is when the station went off the air. Mm -hmm. Didn't you guys, did, was Lou Costello a part of that, all that formation as well at mm -hmm. one time at PGR? I never worked with Lou. No. Uh, Tommy, would no. you? No, no, he, he he never worked at WPGR. He's the VLT, okay. isn't he? No, no. Yeah. right. Yeah, he, he's, he's a, the VLT. Uh, WVLT, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, no, he was never in Philly mm -hmm. uh, on, on that station. Mm -hmm. now, Jason, you were on, so how, so how long were you at that station at Philly, at uh, Geeter Gold? So uh, I began there as an intern in May of 92, went on mm -hmm. the air in October of 92. I left in December of 94. Um, I, I got an, an opportunity with B101. Mm -hmm. And okay. I figure, I mean, it's B101 was one of the top stations in the mm -hmm. market. Uh, <laughs> I was on mainly overnight at the time, wow. but still it's a big station. Yeah. But I will market. tell you, mm -hmm. I will tell you, 
I really missed PGR because at B101, and it, listen, and I, I spent 20 years of my life at B101. Mm -hmm. I love that station. Mm -hmm. When I first started at B101, it was less talk to the nth degree. I mean, mm -hmm. we were card readers. Mm -hmm. So I missed being able to be a personality. Now, they eventually loosened the reins a little bit at B101, mm -hmm. but still, uh, I was kind of spoiled at my very first radio job where I can go on the air and be myself because, mm -hmm. as Tommy can tell you, that doesn't happen anymore today. No, not right. like that. Did you ever do Atlantic City markets? That's where I was at AYV uh, some years ago. You ever did that market, didn't you, Tommy? Oh, Atlantic yeah. City? Yeah, well, of course. Mm -hmm. Like I said, WMID mm -hmm. and the FM was WGRF. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was all owned by, uh, still owned by uh, Merv Griffin, which okay. was exciting. Hey, I'm working for a station with uh, <laughs> Merv cool. Griffin. You know, this is really the big <laughs> time. Really and the format was top 40. It was mm -hmm. really based on either uh, WABC or Wibbage in Philadelphia. It was a top 40 driven uh, radio station. So that, that was exciting uh, on the AM. And then, like I said, Sunday nights, I did my treasure chest of oldie show, which was all, all oldies. Mm -hmm. And so while I was down there, um, in 80, I start, I was there from 80 to 84, even though in 82, I started working at, uh, PGR. I was st still doing both at the time because originally at PGR, I was doing weekends. And then in, um, uh, about a year later, I went to following highlight every day mm -hmm. because I didn't want to get, I was so busy in Atlantic city doing nightclub work i was working for jerry actually from 1980 to 84 at memories in margate oh wow back okay. in those days memories was open believe it or not year round mm -hmm. and i did a thursday night even in the winter time and mm -hmm. we still had locals you know coming mm -hmm. in we still did pretty good and then on the weekends friday and saturday i would spin for him okay and then but the things that developed in my career i started mm -hmm. getting a lot of offers to do weddings class reunions mm -hmm. bar mitzvahs you name it mm -hmm. so there was a lot more money mm -hmm. out there doing things like that mm -hmm. so and then of course with my exposure on pgr with next to high lit mm -hmm. it really got good so then my whole career shifted to to the philadelphia market at that time and mm -hmm. of course jerry and i stayed friendly all through through those um through those years uh, we would see each other occasionally at at benefits or something of that nature but um one of one of my uh uh favorite things of memory is back in 2016 i was inducted into the uh, broadcast pioneers hall of fame mm -hmm. congratulations at, yeah thank mm -hmm. you but at that exact same ceremony jury was also honored as the person of the year mm -hmm. so here it is like i said going back to the reflections of me and a kid and listen on my transistor radio to him on wcam uh, in camden back in in the uh 60s and now here we're both getting honored by the broadcast pioneers on the same mm -hmm. night for different awards, but it's the same thing. We're sitting there. Uh, so, so things like that were really exciting. Mm -hmm. And plus I spent four years at WCAM from 76 to 80 before I went to Atlantic city. Mm -hmm. So I actually sat in the exact same chair, the same turntables, the same microphone that he sat at mm -hmm. when, when I was a teenager. Now, I where, mean, there was where a lot was of that similar. station located? WCAM is that that's uh, in Camden? Yes, yeah, so it was is that up, the same TMR. Is that the same station? No, they were okay. two different. That, that was that was a TMR too. Yeah, that yeah. was that was eight hundred mm -hmm. on the dial. CAM okay. was thirteen ten. Thirteen ten. Okay. Yeah, uh, TMR Studios were on Mount Ephraim yep, Avenue. That's where we were. Okay, mm -hmm. and and that was a standalone building, a nice yeah. little place, you yeah. know. But uh, CAM was on the eighteenth floor of City Hall, right oh, wow. behind, okay. right behind the clock. Okay. If you anytime you go over the bridge and you look over mm -hmm. at Camden City Hall and you look up at the clock, right behind that is where the studios were okay there was no windows there there mm -hmm. is a balcony you could come out we used to love to come out and look at the balcony and uh, look at the at the lights of uh, uh philadelphia mm -hmm. and i remember times in between a record or two i might go out and just to look at the skyline at night. And I used to say, one of these days I'm gonna be across the Delaware there working in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, so here we are many years later mm -hmm. at 4th and Market, me and Harvey Holiday mm -hmm. and High Lit, we're at 4th awesome. and, uh, and Market, right? Mm -hmm. And from that window, uh, we were on the eighth floor at 4th and Market. And from one of the windows, we were on a corner there. You could look over and see CAM, you could see mm -hmm. City Hall in Philadelphia. So I say, look at this, Jerry. Mm -hmm. I finally got my dream after yeah. all these years. <laughs> I'm now I'm looking back at CAM at, back in, in the in the uh, in the seventies. I was looking this way, so mm -hmm. it was really a lot of funny things when you think about when you have a long career. As mm -hmm. Jason can attest to that, there's all these um things that conflict and they come in and out of your life and your mm -hmm. career, people you get to meet, you work with, you don't see them over a few years. And when you see them again, it's like your long lost brother. Mm -hmm. It's like, exactly. You know, you embrace them that way.
And, and radio is a very small world, is it not, Tommy? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yes, without a doubt. Everybody knows everybody in this business. Yeah. When you talk about the the clubs, though, you talk about Memories in Margate. He had a Memories West, the Hollering Plaza in Pensacola. You ever ever worked that gig? I I remember that. I worked with that a short time, Mm -hmm. but I did work there. Mm -hmm. He also had one on Chestnut Street at... um, I forget what what corner it was, but on Chester Street, it was called Memories West, he called it. Right. And mm-hmm. then after that closed down, that only lasted about a year. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's the club he was in when, remember the last uh, broadcast of Wibbage when Wibbage went off the air in 77? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So that, he was, he, that last week they hired Jerry and he came in and he did his nightclub gig following High Lit at six o'clock, if you remember that. Mm -hmm. And he did it from Memories West, which was on Chestnut Street at that time, 77. So I think it was like the next year, like maybe 78, that the Penn Salkin Club opened Mm -hmm. because he he left Center City. Mm -hmm. That's where I learned how to do Soul City Walk at that. Me and my girlfriend used to do it all the time. He he had a name for everybody too. Peaches, here come Peaches and Herb. He used to call us that, you know. Well, you know, he would do that. Mm -hmm. You know what? I say the thing, when you say the uh, the phrase, nothing but stars, Mm -hmm. right? I just just said that. Well, here's how that started because mm-hmm. when when he would do his his live broadcast from memories in margate and other places too but it was a live broadcast he would give people anybody that had the slightest resemblance to somebody who may mm-hmm. be famous mm-hmm. right he would give them the name like mm-hmm. um uh, like like you what did he call you when you when you we, we, we were peaches and her okay you and your yeah, your yeah, wife your girl, i guess girlfriend girlfriend girlfriend. Time, okay yeah, yeah. okay so mm-hmm. He would see people and he'd say, like, if you came in, here's a funny one. If mm-hmm. you came in, because a lot of people did not come in in suits and ties and mm-hmm. uh, uh, that dressed at the nightclubs. Mm-hmm. But anytime a, a, um, a man would come in with, say, a coat and a tie on, mm-hmm. he would call them senator. Hey, Senator, the Senator is here today. Hello, Mr. Senator. So, so people are listening and they think like all these dignitaries are coming. So he would say... Um, he would call, there, there was one lady in, in particular, he called her Betty Davis. Mm-hmm. And then there's another woman he called her Gaga for mm-hmm. Lady Gaga. He mm-hmm. just called her Gaga. So mm-hmm. here's, it, it, there's a funny story there. There's this one guy, he was calling her um, Mel Gibson. Mm-hmm. Mel Gibson's here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So there's this woman listening to Memories of Margate at the time. And he, she hears him a couple of times through the night saying, Mel Gibson's here. So she gets in her car and she drives. He tries the memories and she comes in and she walks up to Jerry and says, Jerry, where's Mel Gibson? And he points <laughs> over to the bar area and says, oh, he's sitting over there. So she goes over, look, and she says, where's this Mel Gibson? And the guy turns around. Well, that's me. He says, she, you're not Mel Gibson. He says, I know, but Jerry's been calling me that all night. <laughs> and he would remember. Then when you see you next time, he, he would remember who you were and call you. To, yeah. He, he never forgot anyone. No, you he know? didn't. Oh, he remembered. He, he, he you know? would. Um, well, he, here's the other thing. If mm. he remembered your name, he, mm-hmm. he, he would always remember your mm-hmm. name. If he was a little cloudy on your name, you were always my man, mm-hmm. Pots and Pants. Mm-hmm. You know, so that way I remember your face, but mm-hmm. not your name. So you're my man, Pots and mm-hmm. Pants. That he was doing that. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, in our teenage years, all the guys were coyotes mm-hmm. and the girls were Amazons I and foxes. That. Uh, right? You almost forgot about that. I remember now. <laughs> well, the Dream Lovers song, Amazons mm-hmm. and Coyotes, yeah. was made because of his phrasing. Mm-hmm. He used to call all the teen, the teenage guys coyotes. And all, all the, co- the, the Amazons and coyotes are here tonight. Mm-hmm. And the Amazons usually were a taller woman and the foxes were like a shorter woman. Mm-hmm. So he would call the foxes and the coyotes and the Amazons mm-hmm. are all here tonight. Mm-hmm. So he yes. always made up names mm-hmm. for that's how he was. That's the best part was. about him, though, he he had not just you know older people. He had teenagers. I mean, his memories clubs. I mean, he had all ages that would come to see this man entertain right, right. with the crowd. You know, because he was a he was a he was a fairly classic. You know, he's a, a legend. He's a, you know, he had the mm-hmm. one of the openings of his uh, his radio show that he used uh, for many years was like cheese steaks. Uh, uh, Philly pretzels in the Gator. It's mm-hmm. like uh, tasty cakes in mm-hmm. the Gator. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like uh, the, 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 they are Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be sorely missed because yeah. uh, love him or hate him because some people would say, well, he talks through all the records mm-hmm. and all that. That's, that's but okay. Keep talking. Everybody, mm-hmm. But everybody knew him. Yep. And there was always, if you ask somebody on the street, you ever hear a Jerry Blavitt mm-hmm. or the Gator with the mm-hmm. heater? They said, yeah, I've heard of him. So mm-hmm. it worked. Mm-hmm. It worked. If Everybody in town knows your name. He was influential to so many DJs. It's not just playing the music and picking the music and playing from the heart and not the research chart, but just right. um, in presentation, how to how to entertain a crowd, being an all around entertainer. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then going back to Jason, I want to ask you a question. And also, Jeff, because you all, you know, younger, 
Um, what was it like? Learn like you you know you got your start with Jerry Blava, but how did you how did you develop this taste for this music, the Motown music? Obviously, it's, it's before you know you were born. Some of this stuff came out. How did you develop that? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I used to watch his show religiously when it was on Channel Twenty Nine. Uh, back in the early 70s, and then it went on Channel 17, I believe it was, in the uh, uh, late 70s, early 80s. Right. It was more like a disco show at yeah, that he, time. Yeah, he did, he did the... Uh, Discophonic TV scene, I believe it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, a new version of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I would listen to him, you know, just mm-hmm. learning about the music constantly, you know, because, you know, it, it was just really interesting to learn because I loved the music so much. It was like to me one one of the he was one of the best there was, and mm-hmm. mm-hmm. when it comes to legends, mm-hmm. how about you, Jason? How'd you develop your love for this music? So uh, you know you are a product of your environment, right? Mm-hmm. My parents were really into oldies music. I mean, they used to take me to concerts at the Valley Forge Music Fair. I remember seeing the wow. Temptations and the Four Tops mm-hmm. at the Valley Forge Music Fair, mm-hmm. which, by the way, to me, is still the best venue that we ever had in, in Philly. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. In the round, the, the the stage spun very slowly, not a bad seat in the place. Uh, so I grew up loving this music. In fact, um, and, and, I, and I told Jerry this story when he hired me, he put me on the air as a 12-year-old. I called him up as a 12 year old to wow. request a song. Mm-hmm. I was a PGR listener mm-hmm. as a kid. Mm-hmm. So I called him up and mm-hmm. I am 12 or 13 years old. And I forget what song I requested, but you know, he couldn't believe that this 12, 13 year old kid requested like Danny and the juniors or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And he put me on the air and we talked mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. So, so I didn't have to learn the music. I, mm-hmm. I already love the music. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I was born in 1973, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm loving songs from the, you know, the fifties and sixties mm-hmm. and because it's, it's great music and I had such a blast playing it on the radio. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, a lot of the great moats and then the B sides and the album tracks. Jeff, oh, you got, yeah. What albums do you have? You got okay. a couple of Jerry's, Jerry's things there. One of his you. albums that he did, uh, it was the uh, one he did, the Disco Phonic Scene album. Okay, is that a live album? or? Uh, I believe it's just the music on it, but mm-hmm. it had a lot of the great songs that he ended up mm-hmm. putting on his CDs later. And this one right here he did with um, Harvey Holiday. Harvey Holiday. Yo, look look at you too. both. Hey, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Look at this. We're right on the <laughs> money, bud. Right yeah. on the money. Yes, yes, yes. And. Mm-hmm. And I, I was I was I was like 14, 15 years old when mm-hmm. I got this and I and I couldn't stop playing it enough mm-hmm. because every song was as good as the next. Mm-hmm. And and every one of his albums, really, he he mm-hmm. he always had good music on mm-hmm. it for lovers only albums. He had you right. know, great. Yeah. Yeah. Teenagers teenagers only. Only. Mm-hmm. Right. There it is. Yeah. Beyond Teenagers. Right. Mm-hmm. What labels that was that Lost Night? Yeah. Um, Lost Night. Yeah. yeah. Lost Night. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff, man. What I got for, for lovers only here, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. For lovers only, you know, got the pictures on the album. And and people, you know, the younger kids coming up today don't realize, you know, they would go to these record hops or they would turn on the radio to hear the music, but it wasn't just the music. They right. wanted to hear the DJ. It was about the personality. Right. Right. You know, yeah. it's so different th- from today. Right. You know, yeah, we, we were mentioning it earlier that the personalities just don't seem to be relevant anymore. Mm-hmm. No, it was called, we used to call it theater of the mind in those times. You would put a picture in the mind of people listening to you, creating, a, you know, a vibe, an image. You know, when you're talking about the music, you would mention, like Jeff was earlier, about knowing all the different uh, artists in the group. Like instead of just the Temptations, mm-hmm. you mentioned Eddie Kendricks and David mm-hmm. Ruffin, and, you know, things like Paul Williams mm-hmm. and all those kind of guys. You got to learn the music that mm-hmm. way. So, mm-hmm. but then as the years went by and consultants starting taking over uh, and influencing programmers in how to attract listeners because there was always the love hate you know it's always less is more see some people think the more you talk you're more of a personality that's not really the case it's getting to the point and getting out you know if you can make your point in 10 seconds versus talking for 30 seconds you're doing a much better job and that's Mm-hmm. That was really the secret of top 40 radio. Uh, you know what people call about hitting the post and stuff. It was about getting to your point where the vocals would come in, make it concise, but don't just keep talking and talking. We're talking about personalities and personality radio and, you know, how, how much different it is today than it was back in the day because people actually tuned in to hear 
the personality and right. to hear about some of the things that were happening, some of the club dates that were going on, some of the concerts were going on. And remember, we had record hops back then. Oh yeah, and that was when an artist was in time in town uh, to do a performance, maybe at a bigger venue. Then they would stop by each DJ's um, venue, whether it be High Lit or Jerry Blavitt right. or. You know, uh, Georgie Woods or whoever was, you know, wherever area they were in. So right. let's talk a bit about those personalities and how the personality radio uh, was back then. Well, you know, I, I told you a story once before. I'll tell you a real quick one because I want Jason to uh, talk about personalities, too, mm -hmm. because he's been through it, too. He, As he mentioned, absolutely, you know, with personality radio on WPGR and then being on a radio station where they wanted him to basically be a card reader. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, but the personalities and, and the artists were always a great combination when you knew them and they knew you. It was always great. They knew you were playing their music and when they would come to town. So they would visit the various radio stations. So uh, uh, I, I was lucky enough to, to uh, meet uh, Smokey Robinson. He came into uh, WPGR at one time. Mm -hmm. He was actually going down the hall to our FM. He was, I love this story, Tommy. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you oh, oh, you've it. heard this yeah. before? I, yeah, it's a great story. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll, make, I'll, I'll, I'll make it the 45 RPM version <laughs> instead of the 12-inch <laughs> disco version of it. So anyhow, they're bringing him down the hall uh, to do the interview on the quote-unquote FM because it's FM radio, you know, and that's where they were going to promote it. But as... Uh, Smokey's walking down the hallway. Um, you could hear the music that we were playing on WPGR bleeding into the hallway there. Not loud, but you could hear it if you were trying to listen or if, if it was quiet in the hall. So he, the, the, the uh, receptionist is bringing him down the hall and he's passing my door. I happen to be the lucky one on the air at that time. It's a shame there was no iPhones at that time. So I don't have a, a picture of it and I didn't have a, a cassette tape running to tape it. But he stayed with me for an hour in the studio. Mm -hmm. He came down. He heard whatever song it was I was playing at the time. I, I do not remember, but it caught his ear and he pushes the door open slightly. And I turn around and I said, Smokey Robinson. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it because mm -hmm. I didn't know he was coming to do the station mm -hmm. for the interview. Or I would have brought a camera in that mm -hmm. morning for sure, even just to get a picture. So he says, man, what are you playing? So I told him and, and we had the, oh, the music was in these cart racks. If you're familiar with a radio station, you've got the cart racks and he's looking and he's, he's spinning the cart rack around, looking at these titles on our carts and he's going, man, I haven't heard these songs. So he, so he stayed in for an hour and answered some phones, took some requests for people. And I was talking to him about Motown B-sides in Philadelphia. They're just as popular as A-sides where other towns aren't even playing it. Songs like Would I Love You is a B-side and I've Been Good to You and What's So Good About Goodbye. And he was like, wow, you guys are blowing me away with this stuff. So uh, that's the short version of it. But uh, that's how lucky we were at times being on the radio when artists would come through. Not not people who lived, because the Philly artists were always dropping in the studio. Billy Harner would come over, Billy Carlucci, um, uh, Junior Perillo with the four J's, you name it. They were coming into the Kenny Jeremiah with the soul survivors, mm -hmm. all friends of my personal mm -hmm. friends of mine. But, uh, but when the national guys who were, were from other cities like uh, Motown or from LA or whatever, the beach boys came in, Mike love hung out in the studio with me one day, uh, taking calls and, and it was j just great time. But, um, but Jason of course could address the thing about, somebody being a personality on the radio mm -hmm. or somebody who just just keeps talking and it becomes what they call a tune out and it's mm -hmm. a button pusher mm -hmm. <laughs> right jason yeah a personality has has pretty much gone away and, and it's sad because mm -hmm. you know i i've always said that the the thing that separates terrestrial radio from every other option out there is the ability to be live and local and to connect with the listener and for some reason radio doesn't do that anymore and you know radio I mean, a lot of people say radio is dying. I'm not going to go that far, mm -hmm. but I, I do think radio is hurting. And I think the wounds are self-inflicted mm -hmm. because these these so-called radio executives don't understand that the way you win in this business is by making a connection through the microphone, through that speaker to the listener, whether in their in their car, in their home, in the office, whatever. And personality is gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I, I've worked I work for stations where where they, they tell us basically, listen, you know, no more than 10 to 12 seconds over an intro, no more than two or three sentences over an intro. Or if we can going into a commercial break, they'll let us do a piece of content, a fun piece of content. And but no more than 20, 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. And OK, how can you be compelling mm -hmm. and entertaining in 20 or 25 mm -hmm. seconds? Now, I did the best I could, mm -hmm. you know, 
but it's it's very difficult to do. It's very difficult to make that connection. And these days it's even worse because there's voice tracking. So yeah. the DJs you hear on the air are pre-recorded in a lot of cases. And in a lot of cases, they're pre-recorded from hundreds or thousands of miles away. Right, mm -hmm. right. And yes. and you, you can't make a connection with the local mm -hmm. market with somebody who's tracking from halfway across the country. I mean, I, I, I'll give an example. I'm not going to, I don't want to mention the station. Don't want to throw anybody, anybody, anybody under the bus, but there's a midday jock in this town who's tracked from Dallas. Mm -hmm. And the jock is very good. And the, the jock actually looks for Philadelphia content to, to use in the presentation, which a lot of, a lot of voice trackers don't do a lot of voice trackers, you know, they're breaking go on the air in Chicago or in Philly and it doesn't matter. It can be the same exact break and it doesn't matter. But this one jock actually looks for Philly content. But then when you go onto this jock social media, you see the jock tailgating before a Dallas Cowboys game. And <laughs> mm -hmm. That's not going to play well in Philadelphia. It won't work. No, not in this <laughs> time. Especially not this time either. <laughs> no, exactly. no, no, exactly. So it's a, it's, it's a shame. I mean, mm -hmm. I still love radio, mm -hmm. as I know all you guys do. It's yeah. in our blood, not to be cliche, but it mm -hmm. is in our blood. It we is. love it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's safe to say we don't like what the business has become. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of competition from the new media too. You know, you right. know everybody right. has everybody has a podcast. Yeah. And, you know, all of this stuff. So, Internet radio. There's everything you know. out there. Mm -hmm. Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the HD channels. Mm -hmm. HD one, HD two, mm -hmm. HD goes up to I think four channels. Yeah. I, I know at OGL when I was mm -hmm. there, I was programming our HD two at the time mm -hmm. as an all seventies channel. And then mm -hmm. HD three, we were playing uh, Phillies uh, uh, games year mm -hmm. round. Mm -hmm. all, we were replaying all the mm -hmm. the Phillies games from the season on HD three. Mm -hmm. And certain years that was very good <laughs> no exactly no that was tough to fill time with that mm -hmm. and then hd4 at the time before they got an fm signal we were carrying kyw news radio on H hd4 now mm -hmm. how many people have hd radios and even know right. how to exactly. track into a hd2 3 and a 4 mm -hmm. i mean uh, mm -hmm. that's the other side of that mm -hmm. Well, um, I'm, I thank you guys for coming down and sharing this history. I mean, of course, you know, we want to uh, continue to celebrate the legacy of the Gita with the Heater, Jerry Blavitt. And uh, he was inducted into the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I believe it was in 1998. Was he the first D one of the first DJs to he, actually be in that Hall of Fame? Uh, yes. And, and I think that was the first induction where they uh, mm -hmm. people like him, Alan Freed, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people. I don't know. I don't have the list of all the people, but it mm -hmm. was at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but uh, I want to thank you gentlemen very much for this, um, doing this for the living legend, the legendary one, the man with, with the, the plan, Eber, the man with the plan. So influential to so many DJs, including myself and Jam and Jeff. And of course, Tommy McCarthy. And I think it's safe to say, Tim, if I could, Jason just, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I think That's it's okay. safe to say we will never see or hear another person like the Gitter again. Mm -hmm. No, never, never, ever again. No. no. He's one of a kind. Exactly. No about it. So I wish you much success, uh, all of you. And Jason, why don't you tell us some of the, where you're at now? You're at a couple of different stations, right? How much time you got? You, you, uh, <laughs> you're everywhere. You know, I know you want the radio today, right? So, uh, okay. So let's see. I am, uh, I, I work at PHL 17. I mm. produce the morning news. Mm. I also have a, my own little sports show at, uh, on Wednesday nights at 930 called The Sports Scene. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Wednesdays at 930, please watch. Mm -hmm. uh, I do pop up on the morning news from time to time uh, okay. doing weather or traffic tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking to uh, the great Tommy McCarthy mm -hmm. as we awesome. do our own tribute to uh, the Geeter. Mm -hmm. I also do traffic on the radio from this microphone here in my basement mm -hmm. for uh, stations in Philly, Harrisburg, and Lancaster for afternoon drive. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing weekends at oldiesxl.com, mm -hmm. uh, internet radio station. Mm -hmm. But going back to what we were saying, it's mm -hmm. they let me be a personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have such a I have such mm -hmm. a great time there. I mm -hmm. love it. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You have that great personality. So much success. Keep on keeping thank on. You. Thank you again, Jason Lee, for being part of the show here today. My pleasure. I want to thank you, Jam and Jeff Wyman. Always great to have you with us. We did some some parties and some weddings recently, didn't we? Uh, yes, you know, we, we did. Get out we there. had a lot of fun doing yes, it. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm telling you, they, they're still raving about those things and some of the club dates and things that we've done over the years. Uh, been together long. How many years we've been working together? Goodness. We've we've been doing things since uh, since the late '90s, right. or early 2000s. Wow. Yeah. Long, long, long time. time. Yep. Mm -hmm. One one of our one of our favorite favorite things that we always talk about is when we worked with. Uh, Richard Street, we had we oh, did temptations, a, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we did a, a benefit with um, Tom, the Linda Creed Foundation, mm -hmm. and Richard nice. Street came out, and he was trying to do a song, 
and he ended up singing over it hey girl i like your style mm-hmm. and everybody was trying to get their cameras going mm-hmm. everybody had dead batteries mm-hmm. <laughs> this was in the 90s so we, well, we had vcrs yeah. and stuff. we didn't have phones and things like no, that so that was that. that that period of time <laughs> and know. everybody as soon as he started doing that that was the song or the speech it got cut off everybody's camera went off at the same time yeah at <laughs> yeah. the same time so yeah. you have to remember it in, in your here, head that in your whole head, night that was a, right. definitely something to treasure though but thanks again Jam and Jeff. Thank you And of very course, much. Tommy McCarthy, always good My to have pleasure. you here on the show, man. My pleasure, buddy. Great to see you, Tim. And, Thank you. And of course, Jam and Jeff and Jason the Music mm-hmm, Mason. Mm-hmm. My man, Pots and Pans. Mm-hmm. Always a pleasure, Tommy. <laughs> we'll always do a pleasure. We'll continue to do it for the big boss with the hot sauce, the Gator with the heater, Jerry Blavitt. Thank you all. I'm Tim Marshall, and thank you for joining us for R&B Showcase.